What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is our draft analysis recap. Draft analysis? Draft analysis, draft recap uh, for season eight of the GBA. We uh, we just rounded up the, the draft stream, and I wanted to go over with you guys and sort of talk about my picks, uh, talk about my mindset going into the draft, uh, and, and what I was hoping uh, to have this season uh, look, moving forward. So uh, before I get started, uh, showing you guys the specifics of the mons that I've uh, that I drafted and kind of going through them on a one by one basis. I wanted to talk about the the prep going in, right? So uh, I hadn't had a lot of time to establish a plan beforehand. Like in previous draft seasons, uh, I have known what I wanted my number one pick to be with two or three backups. So last season, for example, I knew I wanted Feeney, and if I didn't get Feeney, I had two other options for first round draft that I that I would have been happy with. Uh, and so the and I was fourth to pick, I think, or something like that. So the only way I would have if if I got literally snipe, snipe, snipes, then I I would have not gotten what I wanted. But I I prepped everything out that way and and used that as a framework for how I would pick uh, Pokemon number two and then number three and then so on and so forth. So uh, that was the plan looking at the beginning of the draft for that. And, and this time, I felt less prepared for what I wanted as a bigger picture. So I knew that the way I was going to have to draft was by analyzing what people were doing. Uh, are you building for a core? Uh, what Pokemon are you likely to pick that I'm at risk of losing? And so... Uh, as a result, people told me that I ended up sniping quite a few times because I think I was I was seeing like this Pokemon's kind of at risk of going. I'm gonna take this now, and then other times I think it was just a, a matter of people, uh, myself and another player seeing the same value in a Pokemon. Uh, some people hoping they could get it later, and, and me deciding to pull the trigger now. So so that was my mindset this time was look at the board more, look at the playing field more. Don't look so much at a a pre-forged plan that I have for myself. So I'm going to be looking for value in each round uh, and sort of play the game based on that, based on what I can get that's valuable that fits my team at any given step of the way. So um, because I was a little, <laughs> a little unprepared, I wanted someone that could really do everything uh, to start off the 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 game. I always find that those Pokemon are very useful to have on a team. Uh, Pokemon that can go offensive, Pokemon that can go defensive, Pokemon that bring utility, uh, that sets are difficult to know what they're going to do for you. And so uh, I started off with Mew. Mew, I think, is the, quint the quintessential uh, unpredictable Mon. So very difficult to know whether or not it is going to be purely a support Mon. Um, it becomes much easier to predict if the team has too few of one or too few is the of the other for example if your only defogger is mew then everybody knows it's likely to have defog almost every week and it makes it much less likely that it's going to be a an offensive pokemon in that regard so uh, for me it it I like the ability it has to learn such a diverse move pool. It can really be what I need it to be any given week, especially if I notice value in another Pokemon and I really want to support that. Uh, I can pick that up really early and really easily with the Mew. So that's why I, uh, why I really like Mew as uh, first round overall. It can really just be anything. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. Uh, so I, I, I picked as my second Mega Scizor. So I've used Scizor before. And I, one thing I liked about Scizor was the power behind its priority and the strength it has uh, in momentum grabbing because it had such powerful U-turns. The problem with regular Scizor is it falls short in a few areas that I think Mega Scizor uh, makes up for. Now, losing the ability to play with your item with Mega Scizor is unfortunate, but the power of its U-turns, it's really impressive bulk it's a uh, it's a great defogger um, so at any given time you can sort of there's some areas of it where it might seem predictable it's likely to have um, bullet punch and probably u-turn but uh, potentially another bug stab 
and then you really don't know what to expect next and you have to play around that like is it roost bulky is it roost swords dance is it utility going uh, with with defog is it like where is it going to go is it looking for immediate power is it looking for threatening power is it looking for momentum grabbing you is it just utility you can really play around with it i like how it works with mew uh they can form a volt turn core amongst themselves or you double u turn core uh, so they can both be high momentum uh, and i really wanted a solid steel type last season i felt the that my steel options were less than ideal and i wanted a good one this uh, season uh, at this point of the game i was considering well do i want to get something else first uh, and then maybe I will always have in the back uh, the opportunity for Mega Agron or something. But I said I decided no. I want I want a good steel this time. I want to stop playing around with well maybe this steel could do this and and also looking at Mew and uh, Mega Agron. I didn't really feel like they they jived. So it's still early in the draft at this point. Lots of things are going, but uh, I I picked Toxapex as Toxapex is my third uh, round draft pick. I wanted a solid bulky water. I want to take a bulky water early so I'm not forced into one that can't do everything. So, for example, uh, in the past I've had Vaporeon. Vaporeon is great. It's a great uh, wish passer. It is pretty powerful. It's decent in like a lot of areas, but it, it would fall short physically defensively, uh, even if you really tried to build around it. And so it ended up letting me down uh, several times the season I brought it, uh, where I know Toxapex won't. Now, Melodic is another option for this role, uh, but I see them as kind of similar, and I really wanted someone that could uh, threaten with hazards. So Toxapex, of course, can set up uh, T-Spikes. I wanted that option uh, this season. I, I like Water Poison as a typing quite a lot. I like that it is a really good answer to fighting type Pokemon. Uh, there have been seasons in the past where I've been kind of weak to fighting type Pokemon. And I didn't want that to be the case this, uh, this season either. It's passive, but I know myself and I knew in later state, in later rounds of this draft, I was going to make up and maybe potentially even more than make up for uh, that passivity in Toxapex. So uh, we'll keep moving and I'll, I'll refer back to some of the strengths and weaknesses of Toxapex uh, in later rounds. So uh, we're looking at Doug Trio now. A couple of things here. Uh, Dougie uh, is a, we're, we allow Arena Trap in this play. And I think I would it would suck to have someone else have Dugtrio to trap my Toxapex. Dugtrio is pretty good at uh, trap killing Toxapex, and so that makes Toxapex worse. Uh, another thing I was thinking at this point in the draft, now I, I, I need to kind of step back a little bit. I had had in my mind the idea that I wanted, when I saw that round one finished, and then we're going through round two, I pick up Mega Scizor, uh, and in my head, I was like, and next round, I'm going to pick up Victini or Blacephalon. I was thinking this in my head. I want a powerful fire type. But here's, neither of them had gone. It's now round two is finished. It's looping back around to round three. Uh, I'm, uh, and I end up picking Toxapex because I noticed at this point, a lot of people had spent a hefty amount of their free points already like they picked a tier one is their first pick and then they immediately rent went for their free pick number one for another tier one and so people were already really uh, hemorrhaging points that they could afford to get uh, another t1 if they really wanted it so i felt until one of them went i didn't need to pick one and i would have been happy with either so i thought okay let's let's pick toxapex now and see what happens when it comes back around to me later so leading into this being my my round four pick this was on the loop back i'm dead center of this draft pretty much like i'm i think i'm pick number nine or something like that so i have equidistant weights between each time one thing i noticed on my way back one side of the of the map couldn't afford to get another t1 and the other side of the map already had fire types at this point so i know i can pick doug trio here and be at very low risk of losing a fire type um there was one person who was, who did not have a fire type. That was my boy Envy. Uh, but I sort of talked to him a little bit as like, hey, what do you got your eyes on? And obviously he can't tell me. We, 
So, but one thing I'm kind of trying to ascertain is the direction he's looking to go. Uh, and, you know, he's talking about some of the bulk he's looking at, uh, some of the, you know, defog options and things like that. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm okay with this. And Doug Trio would be amazing to pair with uh, any of the potential uh, offensive mons that I'm looking at. Now, at this point of the draft, remember, people looking at my draft are thinking Doug Trio, Mega Scizor, Toxapex, and Mew. They're thinking I'm drafting Stall. Now, I have a reputation for being a stall player, but if you look at any of my previous drafts, I never draft full stall. I never have. I never play full stall. I just oftentimes pick a few very hard to break Pokemon, and uh, because I take quite a long time with my turns, sometimes my games time out. I am not even the number one time outer. There are players who have timed out matches more frequently than me, but I have a reputation for it. So I'm using this to my advantage because the areas I'm looking to go next are decidedly not stall. Uh, I'm trying to look at um, more offensive options and Doug Trio is a great way to eliminate certain options that would be problematic uh, for some of the other mons I'm looking to draft. So we go into round five and I end up picking up Ditto. The reason for this is in the past, Ditto went in round five or six, I think, last season, and I ended up not being able to draft it. Ditto for me uh, is a Pokemon I'm really comfortable with. I have literally drafted it or picked it up in free agency every single season uh, that I played in the GBA. And the reason that when I first started, it was a tier five pick. It's, uh, it was voted on whether or not it should go to tier 3, and it ended up staying tier 4, thank goodness, uh, my heart. But I love having Ditto. There are so many Pokemon that Ditto becomes and makes it that they can't break each other, uh, which makes it a safe switch in to massive tier 1 threats such as Victini, uh, massive tier 1 threats such as Landorus Therian, um, there's a few others that I, that I, I don't want to get into like every single thing that it does, but it it makes the opponent prepare in a different way. And the pick I had before Ditto was Doug Trio, which does the exact same thing. It is very difficult to build a team when there's a Ditto staring you in the face because you go, well, I can't really set up because Ditto's there. Um, and then you also start thinking, well, hold on, but I can't really do this because I might get trapped by Doug Trio. The fear of being trapped and the fear of being, um, of boosting and then giving those boosts to someone else make you prep differently. That is a huge reason for my, for my drafting of Ditto so consistently is mind games that I get to play with my opponent. And sometimes it throws people through a loop. You'll, previous, some big wins I've had in previous seasons You'll listen to uh, a team builder that my opponents have put together and they keep talking about Ditto. That's a tier four pick. To me, that's hugely valuable. And I picked it up in this round because I was still confident that uh, I wasn't going to lose my fire option in either Blacephalon or Victini. Uh, of course, if I did lose them, I know there are still other fire types out there. At this point in the draft, I believe that Infernape was still around. Uh, Moltres is another fire type that I've used in the past was still around uh, at this point several others had gone I know Darmanitan was gone um, I'm pretty sure Arcanine was gone uh, I'm not sure about Entei but also a Pokemon that I'm very comfortable with very happy to use in the future so uh, so that's where my head is at this point I felt Ditto was important other people know the value of Ditto at this point. Like, I have established that if you know how to use Ditto, it can be very valuable as a tier 4 pick, uh, but you gotta know how to play with it. So, uh, we're, we got great talent in the GBA in Season 8, and so I know there are people out there who are very good with Ditto also, uh, but I really, I really wanted it. It's something I'm very comfortable with and that I've been able to do great things with in the past. So I wanted it again. Uh, moving into the next round, I picked up Slurpuff. Did this for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of the fairies had gone at this point. I didn't want to be completely without a fairy, but all the Tapus were gone um, or banned. Sylveon was gone. Florgis was gone. Clefable was gone. Uh, I think either Aromatisse was gone or I chose to go with Slurpuff over Aromatisse. Can't remember which uh, of those was the 
Well, I mean, I know I chose to go with Slurpuff over Aromatisse. I just didn't know if it was still available. I've used Aromatisse in the past. It's a middling wall, very weak offensively, uh, more of a cleric that does okay against some dragons, but not even all. Slurpuff is a potential setup mon that can go either special or physical. It has uh, sticky webs this season, which is insane and amazing. And for me, it being a lower tier mon that I, I felt that I would be able to draft made me feel good about not having to invest too much in a fairy, but having the option there. Uh, sometimes just having a fairy on your squad makes people think twice about what they want to do with their dragons. There's a lot of really powerful dragons in the meta. Uh, between Mega Scizor and Slurpuff, I now feel comfortable against them. Uh, and I really wanted to start filling out the lower tier mons because I had visions for high tier mons to pick up later. Again, I'm still looking at Victini at this point. I really want to be able to pick up Victini. Uh, and I'm seeing at this point that there's only about four other coaches who could afford a tier one at this late in the draft. And so I'm thinking, okay, so there's pretty much only four people and I'm looking at two different fire types. And of those people who could afford it, they either already had a fire or I didn't see them picking up those mons. Maybe they already had a psychic or something like that. Uh, so I, I felt good at this point, um, being able to pick up Slurpuff, filling out a little bit more of the hazards. I now have hazard options uh, for my team in Stealth Rock. I have Toxic Spikes and now I have uh, Sticky Web. So I'm feeling good about the hazard options that I have available to me at this point in the game. So we go into round seven and I pick up Chestnut. Uh, a big reason for that is I wanted something for, to handle ground types a little bit better. Toxapex needs a little help in that regard. Um, now, Chestnut Toxapex aren't a great like duo pair because they're both weak to Psychic, but Toxapex is so bulky and Mew can handle the Psychic types that the three of them form not a perfect core, but something that does kind of work. Chestnut's a decent switch into mons that handle Mew. It can cover something that can handle Toxapex uh, decently well. So the three of them form a decent defensive core. It's not perfect, but Chestnut's a tier three pick. It gives me spike support options. Uh, it gives me a powerful potential for double belly drum. Not that I'd bring belly drum, double belly drum in the same week, but you know, belly drum is something you need to prepare for. A big thing about Chestnut that's great is that it really can do two different things. Um, someone in the past, I believe, swept a, a 6-0 sweep with a belly drum chestnut. I don't remember who it was. It might have been Chimpact against, uh, against A-Drive, uh, but I don't fully remember. So, but looking at that, that's sort of a running theme you'll see in many of my picks. I want my Pokemon to be able to do more than one thing. Toxapex is an example because he's a specialist. I needed extreme bulk. I wanted at least one very solid switch into just about anything. Mew can do just about anything. Chestnut can go multiple ways, offensive uh, setup. It can go defensive, utility. Mega Scizor, same way. It can go offensive. It can go setup offensive. It can go utility. Um, Doug Trio, also a little bit of a specialist. Slurpuff can go multiple ways. Like this, as I'm looking at my team, I have lots of options, which is something I'm feeling good about. So we look into, if we're looking at what I'm at right now, one thing I'm seeing is lots of mons that can go multiple ways, and now I really want to start taking advantage of what I already know my team is capable of doing. Hazard stacking, controlling the field of play if I want to, preventing setup, uh, and walling, uh, and being bulky. So now I decided, now's the time to really pull the trigger and start focusing on either momentum or power. And so my next pick, uh, I knew I needed a tier three. Uh, I decided to go with Haxorus. I think Haxorus is a steal in tier three, but I think it wouldn't get drafted in tier two. So it's uh, for me, it's a big value pick for tier three. Haxorus has an unfortunate speed tier at 97, but it has access to Dragon Dance and Dragon Dance 97 speed is great. Uh, it's attack stat is ludicrous and it has access to Mold Breaker and Earthquake, which I think is solid because so many people uh, draft teams that end up being ground weak and then go just grab a Levitator. 
and that way you don't have to grab something that actually resists ground, like grass or bug, which are historically very bad defensive typings because they provide so many other weaknesses and openings, uh, oftentimes ones that Haxorus doesn't really worry about anyway. So Mold Breaker, Earthquake, Dragon type Haxorus ends up being a devastating setup mon. So I, I decided to go with it there uh, because I really wanted something that's hard to switch into, uh, becomes a big threat. I wanted a dragon. I wanted a dragon dancing dragon. Uh, and I believe that uh, Flygon had gone, but one of the issues with Flygon is I feel like it always lacks in one area. It's too slow if you go choice band or choice specs. Uh, if you go choice band or choice specs, it's very predictable. Uh, it U-turns well, which would have been nice for the team. It's typing... Uh, I didn't love the four times weakness to ice. Um... I know that it can set up hazards, it's pretty good at that, and it has defog and it resists hazards, which is also very good, uh, and it's a levitator, which is nice also, but, um, so I could have picked up my dragon earlier, but I felt more comfortable with this, uh, and I didn't have the funding to go for a tier 4 which is where Flygon is residing, so uh, I felt happy with this, it has the potential to be just ultra, like, wall breaking with Swords Dance, uh, it can go for sweep at the end game with dragon dance uh, it's a great scarfer to provide very high power with immediacy in its speed or it can go banding and just like break right out the gate so i really like haxorus for that i've never tried haxorus before but i have had to prep against it and it's kind of annoying to have to prep against so uh, i thought it was a good tier three pick moving on oh what have i done to this one <laughs> what have i done so i finally decided to draft uh blacephalon uh, in round nine. So, <laughs> sorry guys, let me fix this. What is going on here? This is bizarre. This is funny. Where am I, what am I doing? How did that even happen? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like where I'm going. Boom, fixed. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Blacephalon. Uh, is new to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, people who aren't necessarily familiar with it. It has sky high, like 150 something base special attack. It has very high uh, regular attack also, 127. Uh, a great speed tier, 107. So it'll outspeed all those uh, neutral 100s. It's a, an Ultra Beast, so it has beast boost. And it has access to a, an, a unique move, an original move called Mind Blown, which is a 150 base power special fire attack, but it costs you half of your life to use it. So if you run an odd number HP, that means you get to click it three times. It is so powerful coming off its 151 special attack uh, that if you were to say pack a scarf on it, you'll outspeed a lot of the opponent's team. If you net one kill with mind blown, you're guaranteed pretty much to get two more as long as you've kind of scouted the field. So I really, really wanted that. I really wanted a mod that's so hard to switch into that people oftentimes have to make really random niche counters, and that will open the way for me to sweep with something else. Uh, or if I hold on to Blacephalon until the end game and I've weakened my opponent's uh, team enough, I just pop in Blacephalon. If they don't have any of their answers left, it's just boom, 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 uh, sweep out the rest of the game. So the, really that's what I was hoping for with Blacephalon. Other Pokemon that sort of fit that role similarly are uh, things like Nihelago, which is also a weird, a nice speed tier a bit above 100 with decent special attack. Uh, Nihelago's problem is that it, while it has decent coverage, it doesn't have the raw power. Like, Blacephalon almost doesn't care if you resist it. Mind Blown is so powerful. Uh, it two hit KOs almost the entire metagame. Uh, so people really are gonna have to be looking twice at how they're gonna stop Blacephalon. And that's the beauty of having a team that is very capable of uh, Volt turning around, uh, making moves to bring Blacephalon in safely, to weaken other threats, to bring uh, Doug Trio in to try and take out something that could be a threat to Blacephalon, like rock types. Um, uh, on the stream, I talked about this pick a little bit. Remember, I, I'd had this in my mind since round three, but I kept building 
a team that would take advantage of Blacephalon, uh, knowing that if it got picked before I got around to it, at the time Victini was still available, and so it comes to my turn, i deciding, you know what, my last two picks at this point, if I'm going to pick up a tier 1, are going to be two tier 5s, and tier 5 mons can be anything. So I didn't really mind that much. I just I, I could look for tier 5 value later. For now, I wanted to finally pull the trigger on my dreams, and I picked Blacephalon, and I'm really happy to see what it can do this season. It's so fun to have mons that are just very difficult to switch into. And so uh, in the past, for me, I've found offensive fires fit that role really well. Uh, only a few niche Pokemon tend to be very good against them. Uh, and you can often play around that. The difference I have with Blacephalon over other fires I've used in the past is that Blacephalon is very frail, hard to switch into stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna have to be relying on my uh, Volt turn a lot in order to get it in safely to really do some work. Uh, so for round 10, I decided to go with uh, Rotom Fan. Uh, it's tier five at this point. I have to get two tier five Pokemon. I was looking at Rotom Frost. Uh, I don't like its typing. Uh, Ice Electric is it's just weird. Ice in general is not a good defensive typing, and I wanted a Pokemon that, you know, Rotom is, is the king of this. Decent mixed defenses, decent special attack, middling speed, and the HP is whatever. So you can run it defensively, you can run it uh, offensively and slap a choice item on it to cover one of its other areas, make it uh, kind of a, a breaker or make it uh, fast. Uh, for good pivoting options there. I, I like that flying electric typing. I know obviously having levitate and being a flying type is whatever. Uh, the thing is, is it's an additional fighting resist. It's a overall, I, I wanted an electric type and looking at what was available to me there, I didn't want it to give me more ground weakness because uh, I've got Toxapex, I've got Blacephalon, and I don't feel strong against ground at this point, so I did want something uh, that provided me with that uh, as an alternative option. So, you know, it's tier 5 pick. Uh, I think, to me, something that can bring me Volt Switch. Uh, it's, I think, a good idea to have an electric type on your team. It's a great typing. So, uh, to me, it felt like a, a solid fit for me in that regard. Uh, having the option to be defensive and offensive, which every other tier 5 electric could not do. It could be an offensive one, like looking at the Manectric options, the Zeb Strike options, but uh, it couldn't be both. So that this is the only one for me uh, remaining. And then looking into my last tier 5 free pick, I had two options in mind. Um, and so what I had to go through my head first is looking at our Z Captain system. It's different this season than it was last season. Last season was pick one. Uh, this season, it's a budget system. So you could pick one that's your tier one, and then you have enough to make one that's a tier five. Or you could pick a tier two and then a tier three, or you can pick multiple tier fours, something like that. Looking at, in my mind, I wanted Blacephalon to be able to be my Z captain. And so if I'm gonna have that, I want a tier five to be able to do it. Ronum S doesn't have the coverage options to be a good tier option there. So I wanted a tier five with a good move pool and one that has that and is so often overlooked is Archeops. Archeops I think is an incredible tier five mon. Defeatist sucks. I'm not stupid. I know that's the case, but it can do things to work around its defeatist. So for example, uh, it's if you can bring it in against something that's very passive, it can actually roost back out of defeatist territory if you want to run it that way. It's a decent lead option because it's very fast. It has access to taunt. Uh, it has access to endeavor. You can nuke its own defenses intentionally and put a uh, a uh, endeavor set on it with a focus sash. Uh, it learns quick attack, so you can go endeavor and then finish off with quick attack the very next turn. Between its speed, between its option to Stealth Rock, between its option to Defog, between its option to U-Turn, between its super powerful stab options in Head Smash coming from 140 uh, physical attack, I can drop a Rockium on it. We're talking 195 base power Rock Stab coming off 140 attack from 110 speed. And people will say, yeah, but then if it gets defeatist, well... Consider Pokemon like, say, the Blacephalon that I just drafted. 
you, sometimes you only need one attack off on that thing and you'll take something out. It's not great at switching in, but I have a lot of Volt Turn options to bring this thing in safely and nuke with it. I have several Pokemon that now take very good advantage of that, and I have one of the best slow U-Turners in the game. So I can do a lot of really threaten someone and hit them hard, do a big chip away with my Mega Scizor, not looking to kill, but bringing in the Archeops safely after that, to really look at finishing something off. And I can do that with my Blacephalon, I can do that with my Archeops, I can do that with my Haxorus. Uh, so I'm I'm really liking the option I have here, the pivot ability of some of my Pokemon to bring in these fast dangerous threats. Archeops uh, being a Z-Captain allows me the ability to uh, Supersonic Sky Strike, then free up an item and have access to um, to acrobatics after that with no item left. I can opt to go for the just ludicrously powerful Continental Crush from a Head Smash. I can just play it as a support, a utility mod if I want to. It's a great suicide lead akin to that of, say, uh, Aerodactyl. It's just a little bit slower. It can run both physical and offensive, and it has amazing coverage, guys. Like, it's ridiculous. Just go have a look at its move pool. It's crazy. And it's in Tier 5, so you could do worse than a Tier 5 Mon that's fast and able to utterly nuke a Pokemon that's unsuspecting. So I really do like Ar Archeops as a Tier 5 pick. I think it's a great uh, Z-Mon to pair with the ultra-powerful uh, Blacephalon uh, tier 1 pick, and so that's sort of what I was thinking about this team. Look into uh, eliminating key threats that sort of wall some of my powerful mon. Uh, I can do that utilizing Ditto and Doug Trio in tandem. I have a good uh, U-turn core and Volt turn core now between Mega Scizor, Rotom, Archeops, Mew, uh, and so I can really sort of look at controlling the field of battle with all of the hazards. I have access, excuse me, to every hazard and multiple options to get them in. Or I can just look uh, at being nuke power. I can run very high bulk if I really want to. So I have lots of options here. And I think in addition to having options to go multiple ways with so many of my Pokemon, which makes each individual Pokemon harder to prep for, I have Pokemon that are big question marks to everyone, like Ditto and Doug Trio, that make it hard to prep for too. So really what I was going for here is lots of options that make me hard to prep and then being hard to prep for. And so that's sort of where I was looking for this draft. I think it finished off really nicely. I like my offensive options very much. I think they're going to be very, very hard to wall. Uh, I think they're fun. I think I have a lot of fun options here, and I'm pretty happy with the amount of bulk I have if I need to really wall someone out against uh, a very counter bulky team. So I can sort of play the bulk element against someone else. I can control other people's ability to set up against me and I can set up myself with uh, several great setup options between Mega Scizor, uh, Haxorus, Two Belly Drummers, uh, Mew has access to Swords Dance, to Nasty Plot, multiple Calm Minders, so the threat can come from anywhere. It's just a matter of finding it and I hope I'm able to do that this season. Uh, we have a very hard start. My first match is going to be against uh, Chimpact and really not looking forward to that. Chimpact is a great battler, uh, and he kind of has my number. In the past that I've battled him, he's always just seemed to get it, uh, and I end up not prepping well for him. That's how it happened in the first time I played him. He brought sets that I really wasn't prepared for, and I thought I did a good job looking at it. Uh, it also becomes a problem because I don't really have a front office, but occasionally uh, Envy and I will talk, and MV is not going to be able to help me with this one because Chimpax is bro, so we can't, you know, we're not going to get in the way of, of a friendship like that. And it'd be betraying people's trust to sort of like ask one friend for help and talk to the other one. So I can't really do that. But then my next game is against MV. So two elite. No, actually, I think Chimpax did not make the top four uh, last season, but me. I made top four, I got knocked out by Envy. Envy went on to the finals and got, and unfortunately did not win last season, but there was that at Chimpact, also made it to the playoffs. I got a double playoff start out against people that kind of just get in my head a little bit. 
uh, and so I struggle against them. I struggle against Envy. I struggle against uh, Chimpat. So it's going to be a hard start to the season. But I like my options here. I think I can have a lot of fun with this. I think I can be hard to prep for. And I think I can really put some work in against other players this season. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Like, what, what was your favorite pick that I drafted? Do you think I did anything unexpected? Do you think I built this team in a good way? Uh, give me some feedback. Give me some love in the comment section down below. Uh, but that's going to be all I have for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and um, looking forward to giving you guys some fun battles. Uh, week one, starting off with the Philadelphia Scissors. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.